Hi, welcome back. In this section, we are going to look at all the different database operations. We are going to build the SWED APIs and we are also going to learn how to test them. Now, for the keen eyed people in the previous section, you may have noticed that I had a database initialization error which I had promised to fix. And how do I fix that? In the simple way, because we have a scram SHA1 running, it is important for us to create a user admin and a password. Now, the user can be any relevant name that you want. Ensure that the role is set up properly. And it's important that you restart MongoDB for this effect to take place. Now, I have also mentioned the link below here where you can actually see how to enable this authentication. I am using MongoDB 3.4 and uh, MongoDB 3.2 onwards, I believe, they have all this already in place. There are this, uh, this blog will give you certain ideas about how to ensure that you upgrade the security of your MongoDB. Now, we're professionals. Remember that MongoDB had a huge security loophole earlier in the earlier versions where the authentication was deemed optional initially. So you could optionally set a password and give a challenge response for it. But uh, there were instances of MongoDB which were actually exposed to the web and for uh, any novice or any unfortunate system administration ability, it was open to a huge vulnerability. All those issues are fixed now. MongoDB is as, is as irreliable as possible. So, I am using Docker to start MongoDB, but feel free to use any mechanism, including a local installation for running MongoDB. All right. Since this tutorial is very specific to Go MongoDB, I am not getting into details of Docker, but feel free to look up. There is plenty of resources available on the internet for you to do this. Okay, let's move forward and actually build the sweat module. Interesting, isn't it? I've actually made sure that we are being as close to reality as possible. Now, when we look at sweat, it's not enough for me to have just irrelevant information. I've actually researched, yes, my initial novice research, but I'm trying to be as good as we can. So here are some trivia for the people who didn't know why sweat is so important. If you have a large amount of glucose in your sweat, it is actually a signal for diabetes. Interestingly, babies are sometimes tested for their sweat to detect a genetic disorder called cystic fibrosis. Large amounts of chloride in your sweat can indicate this. Remember, we have a lot of salt in our sweat. That's the sodium chloride part. In addition to this, you also have a lot of electrolytes. And that's not enough. We are also, our sweat band, our fancy sweat band, is going to also measure the room temperature, the body temperature, and the humidity. Simple things, right? If there's high body temperature, normal room temperature, you probably have fever. And if you are sweating it out with normal room temperature and higher heartbeat, probably is good for you. Everyone should exercise. Now, this is our sweat module. What we are going to do now is actually run this and create MongoDB documents in the sweat collection. Now, it's a very complicated process, which is as simple as this. Our database is already configured. We simply have to create the sweat structure, put in whichever values we want, and voila, create it. Let's actually get through this now. Let's see the database functionality. In the previous section, when we were just trying to see database connectivity, all the user passwords are all kept as empty, which is why we were getting that db authentication error now as you can see i have configured it properly and this will work let's also look at sweat module this is the same structure that we saw in the presentation the addition is going to be the create method as you can see the create method is quite simple we get the database connection update any fields like created at in our particular case and insert one into the collection again i'm not getting into the details of mongodb but a very interesting factor here you can see is that the struct tags that are used 
in the database structure have bson and json associated with it bson is the binary json which is compatible for all storage of mongodb documents and json is going to be the restful json apis which we are going to build two videos from now one other interesting factor you will see is the context which i have kept as simple sample context interestingly in the next section we will see when we are building proper microservices how we use this context from the request object of course there's going to be a lot of professionalism involved there so let's get right down to it let's first build the code as you can see so far so good we have to have some method somewhere where we are going to actually insert this database for the sake of simplicity i'm putting it straight into main i will remove this code in the future videos but for now i want to see if this works so now let's just run it as we can see here it shows us that it's connected to mongodb and it's also inserted the sweat document into the collection but you know what never trust code let's actually look into the system and see this i'm using the sweat db i'm seeing the collections and i'm going to see whatever is there in the database right now there it is this is exactly the one that we inserted earlier this is how simple it is to work with mongodb and structs in go